Hey, Mike here from 28 Fish. Today we're changing the oil in this Yamaha Venture Multipurpose. So it's time to change the oil in our Yamaha Venture Multipurpose. This is a 500cc four stroke engine. So I went to our dealership, picked up the necessary oil filter and a chain oil. Miles will change that out since we're into it. And they informed me it's like a two hour process to get down to the oil filter and get the oil changed in the filter change, which is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. They also informed me you need to have this uh, particular oil filter wrench because of the tight space that it is to get to the oil filter and that it really can't be achieved any other way. So the first step in any oil change is to start the engine, warm up the oil so it becomes viscous and easier to come out of the engine. Okay, so with these sleds, especially if they've been sitting for a while or if they're cold, one thing that's, that I have learned is if you cycle the key a couple times before you start it, You can hear that, that was a fuel pump there kicking out. Do that two or three times, and it really helps with cold starts. So we'll just let this warm up. So it's been running for a little, probably two, three minutes now. It's uh, plenty warm, I'm sure. So next thing to do is pull off the, uh, the uh, side cowlings and the lower cowl as well. Of course, the top, pieces as you probably know but if you don't come off by grabbing these uh, half turn clips give them a, a turn after you pull the dent out and then it just comes right off and they're just attached to these rubber grommets let's give them a direct pull so the other piece that has to come off is this lower panel and it is attached by a number of bolts so the two retaining bolts are 10 millimeter and the hex head is the same as the allen key uh, retaining bolts for the side cowls. The reason for that is you have to drain the oil from the reservoir tank so you have to remove that plug, that, that sensor plug, uh, so that you can take the dipstick out and at the very bottom of it is the drain plug right there. So if you have this panel in the way you're going to get oil all over the place. Removing those three fasteners makes way for the bottom panel to drop down and gives you ample room to catch the oil from the drain plug there. You also have to remove this belly pan to get access to the most part of the oil pan of the engine. And that's done by removing these uh, Allen screws as well. Same size Allen wrench as before. And what you're looking for is right there that's the oil drain plug again an allen wrench bolt so that'll bring you to the point where you can drain the oil and replace it essentially you don't have to change the oil and oil filter on every oil change so that saves you a little bit of hassle so the next step basically is to remove the air box completely to get access to the oil cooler which gets removed and underneath of that is the oil filter so the airbox gets removed by uh, accessing the plastic screws that are four of them, just underneath these rubber guides. Look like this. And then in these one, two, three access plugs, you remove them, and there's a four millimeter Allen bolt that holds the rest of the box down. These first two Allen bolts can be reached by kind of your standard Allen wrench, but this one is much more recessed, so you're gonna need some kind of extension. Now that all three bolts are loose, you can see that the air box is free to move. I'm going to re remove these connections at the top just so I can pull this air box right out of the way. Now that the uh, four connectors at the top are undone, there actually are two hoses here at these, I believe these are mass airflow sensors, and then one butterfly uh, type clamp, pipe clamp to undo here at the base on the uh, right side, and the air box will come right off. Well, there we go. We got the air box off. Now, I just want to be very, very careful I don't tip this so that those uh, 
Allen head screws don't get dumped out. Unfortunately, there is no retainer on the bottom. So if you tip it upside down, they're going to fall. And probably, like most bolts, fall into the most obscure place on this here skidoo. With the airbox off, we get a better view here. But uh, looking at this now, I think I'm going to probably try to take off that other side panel because the oil from the oil filter is probably going to spill all over the place there and I might get a better, a better reach. And look what else we found. A winter stock of canola from the local mice. So the left hand side panel is the same thing, two bolts and then the one Allen screw at the uh, foot kick. So we just had to pop one more little piece out out of the way, remove this hose, and then we should have access to get the uh, million dollar <laughs> filter wrench on that, on that filter. So I think we're ready to change the oil now. We got uh, two pans underneath, one over here for the oil reservoir and the other one for the oil pan bolt and our filter. So it don't make a mess of the shop. Not that it really makes a difference. The next step here is to remove this sensor from the dipstick. You just push in on the back, lift up, and then unscrew your dipstick so you can get some airflow. And then we're just gonna undo the bolt on the bottom let that drain and then work on the other side the oil reservoir drain plug is 12 millimeters so the oil drain plug is a six millimeter allen wrench so it is fairly tight to the uh, chassis tube here i can't even get this nice flat ratchet onto the oil wrench so what you can use is the a 17 millimeter box wrench and that will go on there and you got enough room to crack it loose so one little tip here once you get the oil filter loose i would take the oil filter wrench off of it because there's not going to be enough room to remove it once the oil filter screws back from the oil boss because it is fairly crowded in the engine compartment here um, this oil cooler is going to need to be removed so there's one two three four five millimeter allen bolts that have to come out so it can swing out of the way so you can get the old filter out and a new filter in all right all four bolts are out now so i can pull this guy out of the way a little bit of oil in the interchange but not too much so that should give me enough room to work in there now the oil that's required for the engine is a zero w30 semi synthetic oil the filter that you require for the engine is the 5dm 13440-00 from Yamaha and the filter wrench details are here. So anytime that you install a new oil filter, of course, you should always put a uh, dab of oil on your finger and lube up the seal ring. So we have the sled more or less back together to a point where we can add the oil. I just wanted to show you uh, out of the engine itself, this is uh, about how much oil we got. So I'll use the old redneck measuring cup here to kind of get an idea of how much was in the engine block so that I can put that much back into it. So we pretty well had two full cans of oil so that's just around 700 milliliters about three quarters of a liter of oil from the engine block. So just to check I had the oil from the reservoir in this oil container. I filled the can five times from that content which gives me about 1.5 liters. So just a common sense double check on the red neck measuring cup. So there was no uh, OP low, which means oil pressure low symbol. So it must be good that way. Just going to double check the dipstick and we'll see how she turned out. So it did take around two hours to do this. The guy, it wasn't totally full of beans, but it was uh, my first go at it. So I probably could do a lot faster next time. Um, it ended up taking all three liters of oil. What I would probably do next time, instead of pissing around with, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, I put 700 into the engine block and I would confidently put the rest of the three liters that I purchased into the reservoir. So I hope you liked this video and it was helpful. Um, I sure wish I would have had it before I started this a little bit here. Um, like and subscribe, please. Uh, 28 Fish, I love doing these videos. Mostly it's about Saskatchewan fishing, but we do some odds and ends too. Um, if you have a better way to do this, comment down below. And if this is helpful, please comment down below. I really like to hear from you. One last little tip. I think uh, next time I would probably do this not in late November. Why didn't I do this in July? I don't know. Anyway, Mike here from 28 Fish signing off. Thank you very much for watching.